Hello everyone, Nathan here from The Bible Animated, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this hologram effect in Blender, utilizing the internal render engine and freestyle. So hopping over into Blender, um, only thing that's going to matter for, as far as Blender version goes is that you do have the freestyle option, um, as that is pretty integral into what we're doing here. So yeah, as long as you have that, you will be alright. Um, what I'm going to do is, okay, it already has a material. We are going to duplicate this cube three times. And now we're just doing this. So we kind of have some depth going on here so we can see things as they kind of stack up. I'm going to go with that bluish color, shadeless, transparency, and alpha 0.25. We render this up so we can kind of see that it gets darker or kind of in this case a lighter where there's multiple layers stacked on top of each other not really caring for that gray background so I'm going to change the horizon color here to black to eliminate that so we have our four cubes now we need to enable freestyle and well we'll just do render quick see what that looks like okay it's putting black lines on here cool but not really what we want so let's hop over into the layers tab and we're going to create a new layer right off and we're going to rename this one to Freestyle. And then we're going to create two line sets. And in the first render layer, I want to delete the line set. Now we have line set one, which we are going to rename to, oh, how about Visible? Because that's going to be using the Visible Visibility option. And line set two, we'll be using the Hidden. So we are going to rename that to Hidden. And if we render this out now, we get a layer that has all of these black lines for every edge, and it still has the blue. Not still quite what we want. So, go back up to the layers here, and for freestyle, you want to turn off everything but the freestyle. And under the render layer, we'll turn off freestyle even though there's no line sets running. It might give performance uh, gains when we turn that off. Now what we want to do is change our color here to a bluish. Now we want it to be a different blue than the blue of the cubes, because otherwise you're not going to really notice it too much. And then we're going to change the thickness too, so we'll add a modifier, distance from camera, select the furthest object from the camera and the closest, fill range by selection, and give it a test render. And, okay, well, we're still seeing the black from the lines that are visible, so let's fix that right away. Um, we were on the hidden, so if we click this little arrow here, copy line set, we're copying it to the clipboard, then click on visible, and we're actually going to do paste line set. And then we'll rename that to visible. And now if we render it, we get, well, a bunch of stuff that we can't see, and it looks really confusing. So... What we're going to do is go right back down here and make sure that our visible is set to visibility of visible because we were set to the um, to the hidden when we copied that. So we're noticing that the farthest point from the camera, this point right here, is the thickest line, and the closest point, which actually would be right about here, but is invisible because it's set to zero is the thinnest point. That's not what we want. So what we're going to do is click the invert button, change our minimum value to 0.25, and we'll amp the max up to 1.5. If we do a render here, closest point is thickest, first way point is the thinnest. And now you're also probably going to notice that I didn't change those settings on both of these. I just changed it down to one. But when you do the copy set here, what I've noticed it does is it really links all of the freestyle line style information between the two and all you really do is change the options here. So every change I make in the line style is automatically mirrored to the hidden portion, the hidden line set. So we have that set up, we have the cubes. Let's jump over into the compositing and mix these two together. 
just going to get rid of those. Turn on nodes, turn on backdrop. Duplicate that. And set it up to our freestyle lines. Make an output here of a viewer. So we have something to use as our backdrop. Do a color alpha over. Which we're going to pop the freestyle on top of, which you'll notice the little lines there. But we kind of make we kind of want to make these lines look like they're glowing. And to do that, we're going to use a mix node and a filter blur. And we're going to blur the render layer here uh, about five pixels. Play with it till you find something that works for your scene. And then we're going to run those both together and put it with an add node here. Which you'll notice gives it this little bit of a blur. So it kind of looks like it's glowing. Let me just move that all out of the way. So we can kind of see our image. You notice in places where it's it's building up that there's more object there. It blocks up more of this ba black background. And we have our lines. This looks really high quality. Maybe too high quality. So let's go mess it up a little bit. Under geometry in the freestyle line set, we can add some displacement options. Now, if we were just doing a still image, we could use a sinus displacement. And let's pop this to the uh, composite. Um, I think I forgot to plug that into the composite node here. Yes, I did. Let me just select all, move that, pop that in there. Now, when we pull up our composite, you're gonna have to re-render it. Pretty jaggy, um, but of course we can modify these. Put it down to ten. Maybe put the amplitude down to say one. Take out some of that jaggedness. It gives a little bit of curvature. Unfortunately, with an animation, you're always going to have that exact same curving. Which, if you think about it, why would the slight imperfection always stay the same amount imperfect when you have a projected light? We're assuming that this is changing somehow and kind of wiggling around because of something moving in the projector that shouldn't be. So a better one to use is the Perlin Noise 2D, which has a seed value. Now this gives close to the same type of a result with the jaggy lines. Um, I change my frequency to 20 and the amplitude to 5, which gives lines a little closer to what we saw in the intro video. But then we can animate the seed value here. Let's put a seed of 1 there and, oh, I don't know, like 765 here, just a random offset. And as you go through it, it just climbs up, but every frame does get a different amount of jitter to it. So we can go between these two and we see, yeah, it changes. So when animated and rendered out, these lines will be jiggly instead of just being perfectly static. Another thing we can do is create a texture for this material here, which we're actually already have on there. We're going to make a cloud texture. And we're going to make this affect the color, only 50% for the color, totally on the alpha. Let's pull up the color ramp here so we can change the color we want to affect. Let's do something like that, see how that looks. You'll notice that these kind of darker spots stay the same throughout on all the faces. And they should really run kind of in lines like the light is scanning across or something. So to do that, you just change the scale to, I'm going to try 10. Let's see. It makes a pretty tight pattern. Um, maybe not quite long enough. So let's pop the X. Whoops. That one you want 10. The X and Y values to 0.25 to stretch them out further that direction. Mm, that might be a little too stretched out. Maybe I just have this set too high. Again, it's something you kind of have to play around. It depends on your scene and the size of everything. Ah, that looks pretty good. So we have now the like the scan lines running in there. 
we have the jiggly edges, we have the glow. The only thing we don't have is something projecting from the bottom up to this. And now, one way to achieve that would be to just put in a lamp, and we want a, I believe a spot lamp, center that below it, rotate it around 180, uh, 180, I don't know why this isn't, oh, it's not constraining because control locates my cursor for me, but we just do that, hop to the light settings here, and let's see, we want ba -ba -ba, spot shape, we want it to be a square, and we want the halo, and let's just give it a quick test render, see how that looks with the haloing, pretty good, um, probably going to want to change the color to that bluish, and let's change, da -da -da, where is that here? change the, the fall off on it yep to right about there and let's see nope I'm gonna have to go probably to the top of those boxes right about there let's try that there we go so now we kind of have like that light shining up from the bottom projecting this hologram into the world and then of course you can do any kind of animating with that. And this is just one way to do it. Another way, um, you could like add a particle system underneath it and use a force field to pull all the points or do something with hooks to the outside. Again, it would depend on what you're, um, what you're making a hologram of. Like in the scene that you saw at the beginning, we don't need a light source at all because all we're seeing is the hologram. Now I'm just to, uh, show the versatility of this. We're going to just pop in a Suzanne model, give it the same material, kind of rotate it so it faces towards the camera a bit, probably put a subsurf of 2 on it, and we will set that smooth and give it a quick render and see what that looks like. So there you go, we got a Suzanne model here sitting in the back. Um, because of that range thing, we're really not getting too much of the outline on the model. So let's pull that in closer. It's kind of just show it right smack dab in the middle here. I think it needs to be rotated a little bit. See how that looks. There we go. We kind of have like the Suzanne head in the intersection. Though it almost looks like it's in this frontal square. Um, a few things are going a little goofy with that Perlin noise, which we actually can modify by changing the no, wait. I think we just get rid of the sampling. Someplace there's an option, I think. And it, uh, oh, actually, I think it would be... Yeah, I think you would just up the octave count to make that more accurate. Because when Freestyle detects the edges, these edges are kind of conflicting with each other, and it it's having trouble keeping these edges to themselves, I guess. But that's basically how it's done. Simple and easy. And again, it looks just like this. Great background. Nice sci-fi look. And you can really do with anything. Um, oh! One thing I forgot to mention. Let me pop back into Blender here. Um, okay, so we are going to delete the Suzanne head there. And let's tab into edit mode. Subdivide this a few times. Do it again, rendering it out, that is, and you'll notice nothing changed. But we can, with freestyle, we could say we wanted to do this line. Control E, we can mark freestyle edge. So now we have a ring going around this cube in the center that is a freestyle edge. And we can do the same thing with this. And with this, control E, mark freestyle edge, tab out. Now when we render it, that front cube, I was going to say, should have, but we forgot to turn those on. Um, 
edge marks. We want to select edge marks in the visible and in the hidden. Now when we render it, we get all of those edge marks that we just put in. This is handy for if you're doing something not squares, and you're finding that it's not giving you enough of these brighter colored lines. You can just put edge marks wherever you want, put in loop cuts to put in edge marks, and you can define exactly where you want these lines to go. I mean, I could, if I really wanted to, um, theoretically make two meshes. I could take the cube and then I could make a duplicate of it and just leave edges in where I wanted lines to go and do one with the freestyle. And actually at that point, I'd be better off just using a wire material. Because when you use a wire material, that already does all of the edges for us. But this is an easier way utilizing freestyles to select a lot of those edges for you so you don't have to go through and create a mesh that's just the edges that you want visible in your hologram and then rendering it with a wire and mixing just like I did here. So there you have it, how to create an hologram effect in Blender utilizing freestyles, quick and simple, and it looks good. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.